Assalamu alaikum. Okay, so what I had to do for this channel is create an email list. The reason why is because due to the nature of the content of this channel, I don't know when the content is going to just mysteriously disappear or this channel will be shut down. The email mail list is just for the followers or the subs so that you know where these things are just in case this mysteriously happens. So just go down to the link in the description of the video, click join email list, Put your email address in there, and boom, you're good to go. That means that I can also send you other information that I cannot post here on YouTube, and you'll also know where the channel is and where the content is in the event that it does disappear. Okay, let's cook. Okay, people who follow this channel know I typically don't like to get into uh, the trendy news, but um, this one right here, it, it just makes... It makes me itch, man. Not that I have higher expectations for these people, but it's just really highly disgusting. Um, so these Bernstein bears, these Frankensteins, they done sent their Negro sock puppets out to attack Kyrie Irving for hurting their little feelings. The, these Bernstein bears are out of control, y'all. One black man in Kyrie Irving who still has the world upset because he stood on his square like a man, you know, with the poke experiment thing, and now he gives opinions about a situation or something based off of some historical facts and truths. And these pale bursting bears are out of control. Now, these Frankensteins, they have their panties all in the bunch. Have their panties all in the bunch. And just listen to this. Listen to this video here, y'all. Listen, listen to this. There is a voice of criticism we don't often hear in the United States. Um, often when there is dissent expressed in the United States against policies of the Israeli government. Um, uh, people here are called anti-Semitic. Uh, what is your response to that as an Israeli Jew? Well, it's a trick. We always use it. When from Europe somebody is criticizing Israel, then we bring up the Holocaust. When in this country people are criticizing Israel, then they are anti-Semitic. And the organization is strong and has a lot of money. And the the ties between uh, Israel and the American esta Jewish establishment are very strong and they are strong in this country. As you know, uh, they have power, which it's okay, they are talented people and they have power, money and uh, media and other things. Okay, you heard her? And she's one of them. She's from the Bernstein Bear tribe herself and she's telling the truth. Now back to this latest Kyrie Irving situation. This whole Voltron forming against Kyrie Irving is just proof that these people are cowards and how popcorn shrimp weak they are. You know, these are the kids who took their ball home because they couldn't play or somebody told them the truth and said, hey, you suck, you're no good. And they just took the ball home because they had the nice ball or they had the basketball court or they had the, the baseball equipment or you know what I mean, the football equipment or whatever. That's these people. Now, as usual, these pale Frankensteins have sent their Negro sock puppets, Shazam, Shaq, Charles Barkley, and Kareem Alcindor after one man and Kyrie Irving. And, you know, I get it. They got to do their job, but I, I don't respect them. Or I don't respect their job. I think they are disgusting people. And this is a clear example. Them coming out using these platforms to jump on one black man who's a black young black athlete. This is an example of why I don't like any of these, you know, celebrities, these 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 uh, athletes, rappers. But I don't like any. I don't like no Jay Z, Floyd Mayweather, Jerry Rice, Steve Harvey, these buffoons, Beyonce, Idris Elba, LeBron, Kobe, whoever. I don't like any celebrities. Period. I might like what they do for the meantime, and that's it. I don't care how much money they get. I watch whatever entertains me, acknowledge it, keep it moving. Now, there are a few, you know, black athletes that I have spoke about that I said that I respect, and I think I would probably like them if I knew them personally. You know, Kurt Flood. I have a video on this channel about Kurt Flood. Craig Hodges, a video about him also. Mahmoud Abdul Rauf, Bill Russell, Muhammad Ali. You know, and I'm sure there are more that you may uh, have as well. But these are some that I respect for what they did and, what, and how they stood, how they stood tall in their position. And even Kyrie Irving. 
even Kyrie Irving. So they send this, this Shaquille O'Koon, you know, and Kareem Alcindor and Charles Barkley. First off, I got to say I understand Charles Barkley the most. He's always been a pig-eating bellhop from Alabama somewhere, wherever he's from. That's who he's always been. That's what he always represented. Who He is who he is. And Charles Barkley stands on that. Okay. He stands on that. I don't respect him, but I get it. You know what I mean? Now, I recently made at least two videos about this, uh, this Kareem Alcindor, you know, on this channel and how his ignorant, disrespectful slave behaviors, how slave behaviors has got out of hand. This, this dude right here has been nothing but disrespectful to black people since he stopped playing basketball. It's pretty obvious who he is and what he is and what he stands for. He's one of these buffoons, right, that takes his house Negro antics and sprinkles some truth in it every now and then, but it does not mean anything. You know, and then people go salivating off of something that he good said that I mean, that he said good recently that w that happens to be true. Or, you know, they're still salivating or, you know, romanticizing off of what this dude did in 1968, jumping out the window for him. Oh, he did this. He did. Man, I don't this this big seven foot ashy buffoon is a piece of trash. He has done nothing but be disrespectful to my people. Throw this dude in the garbage, man. Kareem Alcindor, he, he has done nothing. You need to worry about his retarded son out here stabbing neighbors and things like that. Worry about him, Kareem. Worry about your son, Lou Alcindor. You know what I mean? This dude has done nothing but play first team defense for the white man since he stopped playing basketball. He played defense on the court. Now he's playing defense for the, for the white man every day in his life. He has done nothing but be disrespectful to us, yo. Get this bum out of here. Now, this dude, Kareem Alcindor, right? You know, in the past, we can tell that when he, what he did in the past and what he's known for as good to the community, to the peoples, it wasn't who he was. It wasn't who he was, and we know that now by what he does now. He was just riding a wave of strength with some men who were willing to die and go to jail for what they believe. You know, he was standing there with people like Muhammad Ali, men, you know, real titans who were willing to die and lose, lose income or possibly go to jail for what they believe. That wasn't Kareem. That wasn't him. That wasn't Kareem Alcindor, yo. He was just riding a wave of strength. He's no different than, you know, your weak minded cousins or relatives that you have or your coworkers or people you know who had no connection to their culture as a black person, as a black man or black woman, you know. These are the type of people who might have called you, you know, radical at one point or crazy. And all of a sudden, as soon as George Floyd situation comes out and Donald Trump comes in, all of a sudden they got their fists in the air like they just this hardcore pro-black person. That's what Kareem is. You know these people not what they say they is anyway. They're just, they're just riding this wave because these white liberals told them it was okay to say something about George Floyd. It's okay to, you know, go at Donald Trump. It's okay to do that so you can do it. That's what Kareem was back then. He wasn't that. He wasn't that. He was a buffoon then who was just riding a wave of strength, and he's a buffoon now. He's made numerous statements being disrespectful to us. And he's using celebrity to speak about against this young, this one young black man, Kyrie Irving, who he should be saluting, who he should be looking at like, man, I wish my son was like you. You know, you're coming at this young black man for standing up for his beliefs and himself. You know, he stood up for himself when it came to the experimental poke. And this and this, this let's go to this poke thing. It's not all about. Oh, I'm getting it. I ain't getting it. You know, I don't care if somebody got it. I know it don't make no sense, which is the truth is proven coming out now. But a lot of pharmaceutical grade drugs don't make no sense. Some people just went and got the poke because they love medicine. They don't like taking responsibility, you know, for their health whatsoever. And some people were really, really forced into this just to have a job. You know what I mean? It's not about that. It's about you have a man here or somebody who's willing to stand on their square and take whatever come for his beliefs. And you got to respect that. You got to respect that. But people could do what they want. I wouldn't care, you know, what he stood for. 
I wouldn't care if he was standing up for, you know, Pokemon and applesauce, whatever. He's standing for something. He's willing to accept what comes and he's willing to die for it. You got to respect somebody like that. But when, when, when somebody like him does this, they go get their big seven, they, they go get their big seven foot ashy mutt, you know, throw a leash on him, you know, pull him out and go ahead and sit Kareem Alcindor on Kyrie. He's playing first team defense for these Bernstein Bears as usual. Kareem is a disgusting individual, man. That's why I have old videos on his channel about this dude. I've been watching and paying attention. It took me a while to say, damn. This dude is really, he may be one of the worst. He may, he may be one of the worst. Him and this dude, D.L. Hughley, Steve Harp, these guys are disgusting, man. But anyway, anyway, now here we go. This guy right here, Shazam. I never liked this big 300-pound buffoon. I never liked him. He was just doing too much smiling and cooning for me, you know, I don't care what he did that was good on the court. You know, I don't care what he donated to or, you know, what, pe what he did that people may consider nice. The impact that he has, you know, and the things that he do that are detrimental to his people using his platform and his, and his voice trumps anything decent that he did. His bad outweighs his good. His scale ain't looking right. His scale ain't looking right. I don't respect this dude and I never will, you know. He uses this powerful platform to speak out against another black man in Kyrie Irving, you know, a man who's willing to tell the truth. You know, Kyrie Irving said what he said about these Bernstein Bears. And I have to see all these Negro peeing mutts and coons like Shaq and whoever else jumping out the window. That's why it's hard to respect these buffoons, you know, because once you know who pays them and what they have to do, you cannot, you can't get too excited about the good, the couple good things that they say, because you know what their bottom line is. I never liked this dude, Shaq, no Kobe's, MJ, none of these big seven foot NBA buffoons. Once you understand what they can do, and then you see what they stand for, it's hard to like them once they get off the court. You know, it's hard to. It's hard to have any respect for them other than a shut up and dribble buffoon. That's it. You do that and shut up. Get up out of here. Shazam, Shaq, Shaq Fu, whatever he want to be called. He's been out here acting like he's got jewels and he speaks with a tongue of justice, justice and everything. But he always shows who he is. And you got to ask yourself, why would a man who's made so many millions and millions of dollars playing basketball on endorsements, basketball, things like that? Why would he still want to get up and have a job, you know, and be here at this time? He's a program idiot. I get it. He has to he has to do this. This is a, he, he probably can't even uh, uh, pick what he want on his sandwich. This dude. he probably can't even, you know, speak, say anything. He probably can't even order his own food. This buffoon. And people, you remember that disgusting. No voting, no fucking song trying to entice black people to vote for these white supremacist liberals. The one with the washed up rapper girl, Trina. And something else in the, in, in the song. I didn't know what I don't know what it identifies as. I'm gonna leave it like that. But Trina was in it with this other thing. You remember that? Well, Shaq Shazam's majority ad agency is the creator of that no voting, no fucking video. Shaq. Y'all remember that juvenile vax that thing up video? It had juvenile and washed up Manny Fresh in there looking like two bozos. Juvenile holding his arm out like a dope fiend and all that when he was talking about um, getting, a, getting a poke. You remember that? Well, Shaq's majority ad agency, that's right, Shaquille O'Neal, Shazam, was the creator of that too. Shaquille O'Neal is nothing, y'all, but a, a disgusting, oversized gump. He's out here promoting ignorance and doing nothing but bell hopping for these white folks. This all he has done since he stopped playing basketball. And his wife created one of the most disgusting, ignorant shows that portrays black women in this most savage manner, sending them frequencies out, frequencies out into the world. You know, who creates something like that? Vax that thing up. No voting, no fucking. And his wife, his ex-wife, with this show, 
portraying women, black women in his savage behavior. This is all Shaq represents. He's a disgust. Everything he touched is crap. You know, but we're seeing this big 300 pound gump in action, showing his usual colors. But it's just it gets a little bit more obvious now. So keep on talk. Shaq should keep on talking. He's the perfect example of why I do not care to see respect or like any of these celebrities, period. Perfect example. The latest, this, this latest Voltron forming, this bombardment of Kyrie Irving is absolutely disgusting. And it's not just about Kyrie, y'all. It's not just about him. It's about any black man or black woman who stands up and tells the truth and sticks to their beliefs. This is what's going to happen. This is what's happening to you at work, at your job. When you do this, what do they do? They send a buffoon. They send a couple of buffoons to come against you. Well, I, I, I thought it was okay. This is what they do on every level. This is just on a celebrity level. You can't respect people like this. You can't respect people like this. You know, nobody has to agree with everything somebody's saying, but you have to respect somebody who's willing to stand on and die for what they believe. You know, anybody who's a real one and decide to stand up, these are the people that are going to come at you and come against you. People like Shaq and all these other celebrities. That's why you can't. It's hard to respect these. These people are trash to me. These people are trash. And these Bernstein bears, these Frankensteins, it just goes to show you how scared they are, how weak they are. How weak they always been. You got one, you got one black man, young black man, athlete, shaking up the shaking up the entire world. You know, it goes to show you how weak these Bernstein bears are, these Frankensteins, these mutts. This is what they do. Anyway, easy.